Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. We are going to handle some actual real live mom questions tonight. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Bridget Young. I'm a doctor of perinatal nutrition and certified lactation counselor and founder of babyformulaexpert.com. And I normally do a happy hour occasionally when I feel like it. <laughs> Not when I feel like it. When I have time. <laughs> and handle an infant feeding topic. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I tried actually just answering some emails that I received here on a live. Um, I wasn't sure how helpful it would be, but a lot of people tell me it was really helpful. So I'm going to do that again, and hopefully it's helpful again. Uh, the reason I really like doing this is I get a lot of questions from email, on Facebook, on Instagram. And if you have sent me a question about your very precious baby and I have not responded, I am so sorry from the bottom of my heart. I get tons of questions, and this website is a passion project of mine, and I only have so much time I can devote to it. And it literally breaks my heart because I have two babies, and I know exactly how desperate we all feel when your baby is not feeling well. So I'm sorry, and hopefully some of these questions will help you. As a side note, my poor Vaughn, my baby is three, and he had the stomach flu this morning, which he has bounced back from, but... Oh, he was so snuggly today. I felt horrible he wasn't feeling well, but I got so many snuggles. He let me nap with him. It was just the most precious day. So, which is why he went to bed early. Both boys are down early, so I actually had some extra time. So I'm going to read some questions. Got myself a little drink to help us power through this. I made some date cookies. Ate one. Chocolate all in the teeth. Decided I'd wait to eat the rest until we're done with it. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So bear with me as I read the question. So this question is from Claire. Hi. Hi, Claire. I'm exclusively pumping for my three-month-old baby, God bless you, and trying to introduce formula so I can gradually wean off pumping when I go back to work. I hear ya. We have tried Babies Only with Whey and Earth's Best without DHA. With the Babies Only, my daughter projectile vomited almost immediately. Not a good sign. With the Earth's Best, she took a bottle a day, okay, for about a week, although with some fussiness and reflux but has now started projectile vomiting each bottle. We are in close touch with our pediatrician, good, to make sure there's no allergy at issue. But my question is, assuming the pediatrician doesn't think she's allergic to cow's milk, would a gentle slash partially hydrolyzed formula address the vomiting and reflux? Or what would you recommend? Thank you so much, Claire. Claire, first of all, hat off to you and every other mom who exclusively pumps. I mean, hats off to all moms who just feed their babies, but exclusive pumpers are just, they have a special circle of heaven reserved for them because pumping sucks. Um, and you guys are just amazing women warriors. So thank you for everything that you do. Okay, obviously I do not know your baby and I'm thrilled to see that you're in close contact with your pediatrician because they know you and your medical history. But what I can recommend trying is, so you asked, would a partially hydrolyzed formula help with the vomiting? I'll tell you what, it's not gonna hurt. <laughs> So projectile vomiting, obviously, is not a great sign. It can be triggered by both an allergy or just a sensitivity. Usually, if a baby's having a sensitivity, it's to the protein. It could be to anything, really, in the formula. Um, so I would say definitely, if your pediatrician is okay with you trying a partially hydrolyzed and they don't want you to jump straight to a hypoallergenic formula, definitely try a partially hydrolyzed formula formula. In my experience, lactose doesn't cause projectile vomiting, so it's likely to be the protein. So again, switching to a partially hydrolyzed, which is the protein, um, may help. If it doesn't help, speak with your pediatrician, but it may be an allergy because kids with a true cow's milk allergy will react to a partially hydrolyzed formula. The proteins aren't broken down enough. So I actually, I have a guide on my website that compares all the partially hydrolyzed options on the market, but you have several. Um, I know, so you're on Earth's Best and babies only. So you don't say that organic is a priority to, for you, but I'm just going to throw out there that Earth's Best sells a gentle formula that is not partially hydrolyzed. Some of the proteins in the formula are partially hydrolyzed, but some are intact. So if you really want to do a scientific test and try a partially hydrolyzed formula, do not pick the Earth's Best Gentle, which is in kind of a turquoise can. Similarly, do not pick a generic version of Gerber, of Enfamil Gentilese. Enfamil Gentilese is a partially hydrolyzed formula, but lots of the generic versions of it, like a store brand version, do the same thing that Earth's 
best gentle does, where about only half the proteins are partially hydrolyzed, the other half are intact, and they call it gentle, because that term gentle is not regulated. So they're allowed to do that. It's just a very confusing. Um, so I would recommend going to my website, look at the list of things that are available. That, the article's kind of old. Plum, gentle, I don't think it's on the list. However, it is a partially hydrolyzed formula that you can consider. Um, so again, I would I would say definitely try it as long as your pediatrician is okay with you trying that step down partially hydrolyzed and they don't want you to jump right to a fully hydrolyzed. They'll probably want to do things like check for blood in the stool or check for, for, for some other symptoms of allergy before recommending that. But whatever they recommend, you do with, you do, because your pediatrician knows you are a baby. I hope that's helpful. Um, and good luck going back to work. It's a doozy. You're going to do great. <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, da, da, da. This is from Rachel. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Rachel. Please, please, please help. Okay. I'm like late responding to this, but I'm hoping it's still helpful. I watch a lot of your videos and I'll try to make this question quick. I have a three month old on, oh, I think I picked these on purpose together, on Earth's Best Gentle which I just talked about, and his legs and arms seem to be developing eczema. This is our third formula we've tried after breast milk, where he's having rashes, foamy stools, and colic. I'm so sorry. Similac Pro Advance causes constipation eczema. That's when we started. He started getting cradle cap, not sure if it's related. So hard to tell. As you know, cradle cap is perfectly normal and doesn't hurt the kid. So it's fine. Um, Earth's best original caused constipation and repetitive spit up. I tried going with an organic formula because my other son is allergic to dairy and pesticides. He gets hives and inflammation in his gut and on the spectrum and really thriving on a dairy-free, organic, non-GMO diet. I'm so glad you found something that's helping him um, optimize his whatever symptoms he's having. I saw in one of your videos you agree that a partially hydrolyzed protein is probably best for my little one, but I'm also concerned about the palm oil and constipation as well as it not being organic. I don't even know where to go from here. Please help. Oh, Rachel, you have a lot on your plate, mama. Um, okay. Well, you've got a couple options. If um, it sounds like you've done a little legwork and you think a partially hydrolyzed formula is going to be helpful, I agree usually like at three months old, I, I still think a three months old is a real newborn, a really new baby. Um, if he's having issues, a partially hydrolyzed formula is not going to hurt as long as your doctor agrees. Um, and some of the symptoms, I mean, it's impossible to see a symptom and say, it's this in the formula, but some of his symptoms could be attributed to the protein. And so because there's no harm in a partially hydrolyzed formula, um, I would say, yeah, give it a try. So you're on Earth's Best Gentle, which I just mentioned. Um, Earth's Best Gentle is not, it's not, all of the proteins are not partially hydrolyzed. Some of them are intact. So if your baby is being stimulated in a bad way um, by an intact protein, that can still happen on Earth's best gentle. So I would pick a, a formula where all the proteins are partially hydrolyzed. Um, if organic is really important to you, the only option you have in the U.S. is plum gentle. It's the only formula that is partially hydrolyzed protein and also organic. The carbohydrate source is also 100% lactose. It has no corn syrup or sucrose or other sugars. Now, if you're concerned about eczema in particular, there's a lot of good research to suggest that a partially hydrolyzed formula made from 100% whey might be helpful, particularly for eczema. The good news is Plum Gentle is 100% whey. The other formulas that are 100% whey that are partially hydrolyzed are Gerber's formulas both Gerber Gentle and Gerber Soothe. There is a European partially hydrolyzed formula that is 100% whey and it's called Hip Comfort. Um, I, you know, you've got, you have to clear a European formula with your pediatrician before you go and try it, especially um, since we have some basically American versions on the market here. So I would say talk to your pediatrician um, and see what they would recommend from those options. Your best US option is gonna be Plum Gentle because it's the only organic option. Um, I, at the end, you say you're concerned about palm oil and constipation. Well, both Gerber and Plum use palm oil. Palm oil is really hard to avoid in the US. Similac makes a 100% whey partially hydrolyzed formula. It's called Similac Total Comfort. 
However, that's lactose free. So basically you're, you're stuck in the position of having to um, have some pros and cons. So Plum Gentle is organic and 100% lactose, but it uses palm oil. Similac Total Comfort is not organic, but it doesn't use palm oil and it has no lactose or barely any lactose. So you kind of have to choose. Um, Gerber is sort of in the middle. It's not organic. It's the protein that you want. Um, and it uses, depending on the one, Gerber Gentle is 70% lactose. So mostly, and Gerber Soothe is 30% lactose. So, okay, so go to my website on the blog. Yes, on the blog, there's an article that compares all the partially hydrolyzed formulas out there, including hip comfort. So you don't have to remember these numbers. So you can show it to your pediatrician, express your concerns, and then the two of you can discuss which one you think is the best to try with your baby. And I really hope one of those works out for you. Um, and God bless you dealing with two babies with dietary issues. It sounds like you're doing awesome with your older kid, finding something that's really allowing them to thrive. Um, and I really hope this helps you get something worked out for your baby too. Okay, next. I'm trying to get to like three or four of these and then I'm going to go crash. Okay, we'll do a little. Thank you. This one is from Lara. Hi, Dr. Young. Hi, Lara. I have listened to many of your YouTube videos and found them so helpful. Oh, thank God, because sometimes my kids are in them and it is a hot mess. And I think, I wonder if everybody can understand this. <laughs> I have breastfed my baby for the past nine months. Psh, rock and girl, that's awesome. And I've decided after weeks of deliberation to begin the weeding process. It is a very hard decision to make. I relate. I've chosen Similac Pro Advance, great formula, and plan to introduce formula slowly over several weeks by increasing the ratio of breast milk to formula in my son's bottle. Love that. You have watched my videos. It's just what I recommend to do. I work full time and my son goes to daycare, so I have to send him with pre-made bottles. My question is related to how long breast milk and formula can stay mixed together in one bottle in the fridge before it goes bad. Bad in quotes. I was thinking to mix the bottles in the AM before I go to work. What are your thoughts on this? Thank you so much for your feedback. Perfect plan. So the answer is, um, let me back up a second. I love mixing breast milk with formula. Um, when you're transitioning to your child to formula, when you're switching formula, whatever breast milk you have available. I have a whole video about why, so I won't go into that. But the, the safety rule is, once you mix breast milk with formula, you have to treat the mixture like formula. So that means as soon as you mix it, if you like are prepping your formula, you mix it and then you put it back in the fridge, you have 24 hours to use it if it's stored in the refrigerator. Once it comes out of the refrigerator and gets warmed up, you know, different people say different things, but you know, it's like one, two hours max once it's been warmed, you know, it, to give it to the baby and then you have to ditch it, um, which is devastating if they don't finish the bottle because it's breast milk you have worked so hard for so absolutely mix if you're taking bottles to daycare and they won't mix them for you there which most daycares won't mix it in the morning because then you have all day so for some reason like if your baby's nine months you know if they eat a lot of solids and they don't use a bottle you can feed that you can like take that bottle home and you have the night to feed it to them so you don't have to throw it away um, my other suggestion would be to send a bunch of bottles when you're first starting out with the mixing, um, and at nine months, they're in that phase of ramping up their solids and slowly decreasing their volume. So when I say send a lot of bottles, I mean send a lot of smaller bottles, or if you're, um, depends, it's some, some daycares are more flexible, like if you can send a bunch and they pour it into the bottle, most daycares just want it in the bottle. So instead of sending, um, God, it's late. Instead of sending three four ounce bottles, which I'm sure you're sending more than that, but just for my easy math, instead of sending three four ounce bottles, maybe send, um, if you have it, six two ounce bottles, if they'll let you do that, so that they can pull it out and they still feed the baby to the baby's um, signals. If the baby's hungry, they can just keep feeding him, but you don't run the situation where they heat up a four ounce bottle, baby just had solids, needed a little comfort sucking, and then it's done. Then they have to ditch it. Like, that is terrible. So while you're, and oftentimes, sometimes, some babies when they're transitioning from breast milk to formula will eat more or less. Um, I've seen both happen and it's because I think, my opinion is because um, mom's breast milk totally varies. Some moms make lower calorie breast milk, which is fine. Their babies just drink more of it. Some moms make super creamy breast milk, which is fine. And their babies just drink less. So the, the point is 
formula is very regulated, it will fall either more calorically dense or less calorically dense than your breast milk that your baby is used to. So your baby will drink more or less of it than your breast milk accordingly. Babies are awesome. So until you figure out what that is, so you know exactly how much formula you need to be making, if your daycare will allow, send smaller bottles till you are till he's showing a consistent pattern and then you can send bigger bottles um, if you if you don't have tons of breast milk in the freezer, which let's face it, none of us do. Um, there was a lot of rambling and I hope that made sense. If the small bottle thing is just way too much dishes, don't worry about it. The point is, once you mix it, you have 24 hours in the fridge, so mixing in the morning is better than mixing in the evening. I could have just answered it there. I hope all the rest of the rambling was actually helpful. Okay, here's a question from Sage. Hi, Sage. Hello, I wanted to say thank you first for providing such vital information. You're welcome. So much more important than, oh, I should have ruled. So much more important than random formula reviews people do who really have no idea what they are talking about. Well, between you and me, I agree with you, Sage, but we'll keep that private. I love how you clearly break everything down. I lost my place. Oh, I'm new to this, but I was a little confused. So clearly I'm not that clear, but <laughs> don't worry, it's confusing. <laughs> I am reading the hydrolysis protein or hydrolyzed protein article, and I wasn't sure what mine has. I'm using Sam's off-brand and familiar premium non-GMO in the yellow tub and it lists non-fat milk and then lactose on the ingredients label. So does it not have any partially or hydrolyzed proteins? Should I be switching to something that does? It does have lactose and prebiotics, but not sure on the protein. Thanks. Okay. That's an awesome question. Um, and it is really confusing. And yes, formula is a food, but it's very different than just food that you and I buy and eat, and so the ingredients are very hard to distinguish. So the answer is, you are correct. Both Enfamil Infant and, um, what are you using, Kirkland? Sam, yes, Kirkland Off-Brand Enfamil, which is a, a generic of Enfamil Infant, are intact protein, meaning none of the proteins are hydrolyzed at all, either partially or fully. They are like, as they came out of the udder, they go into the formula, which isn't a bad thing. It's only a bad thing if your baby isn't tolerating it well. So to answer the second question, should I be switching? If your baby is doing great, girl, stick with it. That formula is a bargain, and it is a great formula. It's like um, Enfamil Infant is a great formula. It's a classic, um, basic, standard formula. So yes, it is intact protein as it comes out of the cow. But like I said, that's not a bad thing unless your baby's not digesting it well. I always describe it like every, every adult has something that you eat. Like for some reason, pineapple gives me blisters in my mouth. Well, pineapple is a great food, but just not for me. So I don't eat it. No problem. Problem solved. Um, that's kind of how I think about intact protein. And you don't say how old your baby is, um, especially if your baby's past that tiny, tiny newborn phase. Um, so if it's working, stick with it. And yeah, it's great that it's 100% lactose. It does have a prebiotic in it. And for other of you how, who are watching, you, if it is a partially or fully hydrolyzed formula, it will have some form of the word hydrolyzed on the ingredient near the protein. So it'll either say, for example, partially hydrolyzed whey or um, partially hydrolyzed non-fat milk or the other version of that word is hydrolysis. So partially hydrolyzed describes the protein. Hydrolysis is actually a noun. So it might say whey hydrolysis. Both of those indicate there's some degree of hydrolysis. And hydrolysis is just a fancy term that means, like think about snapping the proteins in half or into even smaller sizes. We can't just say broken down because that would be far too simple. Um, so that's how you know. And then if it says hydrolysis, you don't know if it's partially or fully hydrolyzed. You have to pick up on other clues to know. Like, for example, if it says whey hydrolysis, that could be partially hydrolyzed whey. It could be fully hydrolyzed whey. Um, usually the way you know is the way you know, haha. <laughs> if it is a hypoallergenic formula, it is fully hydrolyzed. Um, and if it's not hypoallergenic or it has the word partially, then you know it's partially hydrolyzed. So it's not simple. But if you don't see any of those words, the hydra something, then it is intact. Because it won't say intact or full size or anything like that. But if it just says, for example, nonfat milk, that's just nonfat milk, like the same milk that you would pour out of a carton um, just put into formula. Um, and similar, I know that that formula also has extra whey added. And it will say something like, either whey protein or whey protein concentrate or demineralized whey, all of that is 
just whey protein, the same way it came out of the cow, not processed at all. Um, so I hope that's helpful. And again, I want the punchline of the answer to this question to be, if your baby's doing great on this formula, stick with it. That's great news. Um, and a formula switch is hard on a baby. So if the baby's doing well, stick with what's working. That's my opinion anyway. Okay, this is going to be my last one so I can go crash. This is from Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hey, I really need some help. I've talked to my son's pediatrician, but I'm looking for a second opinion. Okay, I'm not a pediatrician. I have a PhD, so this is not medical advice. I do not count as a medical second opinion. I can just ramble my personal opinion, and you and your pediatrician can do with it what you would like. My son is five weeks old and gets constipated really bad. It's so hard to watch. It seems the only time he'll poop is when I have to give him medicine. He's going about every other day, sometimes seven in the third day. Oh, so he gets stopped up, and then the court comes out, and he's got a lot backed up. It started when I was nursing, so I stopped for a couple days, still pumping and saving it. Good. And his pediatrician told me to give him soy for a couple days. I only gave him Similac soy, but still nothing, unless I give him constipation medicine. And I've been giving him gripe water at night before bed because that's when he's the most fussy. I tried going back to breast milk, but I'm not having any luck. Right now, I'm ready to stop breastfeeding and get him on the right formula. Please, if you have any recommendations, I would highly appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, Kelly, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so, so it sounds like you were breastfeeding and the only formula you've tried is soy, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, okay, I cannot solve this for you. I'm going to give you several things to think about with your pediatrician related to constipation and um, and then you can decide what to do. couple thoughts. If you are uh, breastfeeding or pumping milk, I know you said it started when you were breastfeeding, so it's not like going back to breast milk is going to completely solve this, but breast milk has a laxative effect, like in a healthy way for, um, for breastfed babies. So if you are going to end up mixing, this is a rare circumstance where I might recommend experimenting with, say, if you were going to do 50-50. Um, normally I recommend mixing your bottles, all your bottles, but experiment, you experiment a little bit with trying one whole bottle of breast milk and see if that can help stimulate him to have a bowel movement, especially it sounds like he gets really backed up and then he'll have a ton. So I kind of think about that, like cork holding everything in. If one whole bottle of breast milk will help, um, push it through. You talk to your doctor and talk to, if you have a nutritionist or your PCP, ask if you giving up dairy for a little bit of time, um, experiment with that and seeing if that will help him to stool uh, more comfortably. In formula, things that you can think about um, when we hear constipation, so you've tried soy, you can try a bunch of things. Um, one, you can try choosing a formula that does not have palm oil. Palm oil causes uh, the, the stool to become more more firm. And that doesn't bother most babies, but if your baby is prone to constipation, sometimes it's like the straw that broke the camel's back and just firming up that so a little more causes severe constipation for some kids. Um, if that's your baby, it's worth experimenting with a formula that doesn't have palm oil. Now, all of Similax formulas do not have palm oil. So you used a soy formula that didn't have palm oil. It didn't provide a lot of relief, um, but it might be worth trying a Similax formula that's not soy. Um, and see if that makes a difference. You could try a partially hydrolyzed formula. That's kind of a stab in the dark. Sometimes that helps some babies. Sometimes it doesn't. It's not, um, not a foolproof thing. So if you wanted to do both of those in one, the only formula in the U.S. that you have is as an option is Similax Total Comfort, which is a partially hydrolyzed whey formula, and it does not have any palm oil and it does not have hardly any lactose. Now, I don't consider lactose as being constipating. So getting rid of the lactose is not necessarily a benefit, in my opinion, for your situation. Um, however, like I said, that's your only choice on the US market for something that does not have palm oil and does not, it is partially hydrolyzed. So um, if you wanted to, if, you're, if your pediatrician wants you to stick with soy for a while, you could consider trying Gerber soy because their soy protein is partially hydrolyzed. So it's still soy, meaning it's going to be completely non-dairy, um, but the proteins themselves are going to be much smaller than the proteins that are in um, Similac soy formula. Um, the very last thing is 
ask your pediatrician if, because it sounds like your baby is yeah, five weeks old, is a little, that's a little guy. Um, ask your pediatrician about trying Mommy's Bliss. Um, has a supplement called Constipation Ease, and I can't remember if they say, I think on the, on the label it says for six months and over. over. Um, so you absolutely must ask your pediatrician if they're okay with you um, using it for a younger baby, but it's basically a baby magnesium. It has a prebiotic in it, but giving your baby a prebiotic is not going to cure their constipation immediately. It's not like an acute relief. Magnesium um, can is a stool softener. And so in the mommy's bliss, it's like a baby watered down version. So your pediatrician has to okay it. Um, there are medical papers using um, much higher doses of magnesium in formula for constipation. Um, these formulas are not on the market now, showing great results that it improves constipation symptoms at much higher magnesium concentrations than could be reached with this supplement. But I feel okay seeing them on the market for a otherwise healthy term baby, but you must clear it with your pediatrician. Um, so sometimes that can provide relief and you give it kind of like ripe water, like once a day, or, you know, if they're plugged up for, you start noticing signs of constipation, you would give one dose and see if that helps them move it through. And then other classic things like, you know, I'm sure, you know, this is, this is not, you know, it's bicycling the legs. Um, Google, YouTube, watch some YouTube videos of baby tummy massage. And, you know, that's like physical tactile things to just literally help them relax and move um, move that stool through. Gripe water, I'm glad your pediatrician is okay with that. Some gripe waters can help with constipation. doesn't do anything to the stool itself, but some, some gripe waters that have particularly fennel and some of the other herbs that help relax muscles, um, you have to loosen a lot of muscles at the end of the tube to release stool, like around the, the rectum and the anal sphincter, et cetera, that baby has to be able to relax those to push out the stool. So sometimes gripe waters provide relief to some babies, but it is, ha, it's a total crapshoot <laughs> um, to find exactly what helps your baby. But I hope those suggestions um, give you some things to think about. I'm hoping one of them like struck your mommy intuition, like, oh yeah, that's going to be it. And if one of those did, try that one first, as long as your pediatrician is okay with it. Okay, I just remembered a one last question here that I was an awesome question, I wanted to answer it, because it's from an RD. It's from Ellen, who's an RD. Hi, I'm an RD. I just started working with WIC. Awesome, love WIC. I would like to say, oh, I'm gonna skip, thank you for the compliments, I'm gonna skip them over because I feel very self-conscious reading them. My question to you is more about more specialty formulas such as Alimentum versus Alicare versus Nutramogen. So these are specialty formulas I don't talk about much on my website because I want you to, if you're considering these formulas, I want you to be working with a, a, your pediatrician and perhaps a GI. I have an MD who will often place infants on Alicare and then quote unquote transition them up to give them Alimentum. My question is, with your knowledge and understanding of all the formulas, does this make sense? My understanding of both formulas is they are both very much broken down proteins that make them easier to digest. So why would moving from one to another be be the right step up to quote unquote normal formula. Wouldn't it just be like switching from Gerber to Similac? Just curious on what your thoughts are. Ellen, I love this question. I'm going to answer it, but I just really appreciate you thinking scientifically and strategically about the patients that you're helping. Um, so to answer your question, sounds like your MD is awesome and they actually um, understand a lot about uh, formula nutrition, which is not always the case. And that's not to bash pediatricians. It's just because they don't get trained on this. Um, but so you're saying this MD will often transition babies off of Alicare onto something like Elementum. So that is correct. That is a jump in protein size. So I'm going to give you some examples of protein size and categories moving down. And if you do not want to listen to this whole thing, just go over to my website, click on the formula series, and go to the protein size article, and I have this all recorded for you. So the bulk of formulas on the market are intact protein formulas. And intact just means like intact. We haven't done anything with them. As I said earlier, the way they came out of the cow. So big, big proteins. Um, this is like your enfimal, your classic formulas. Enfimal, infant, Similac, advanced, the generic of those big proteins. So the thing with those is really large. Next, sometimes uh, manufacturers will break up the proteins to be smaller size so that they are quote unquote easier to digest. That's not rocket science. We just have this thought like, oh, they're smaller proteins, must take less work to digest them. That whole category of formulas is called partially hydrolyzed 
formulas. This is all of Gerber's formulas. Similac Total Comfort, and Famil Gentilies, a lot of formulas that use the word gentle in their marketing are partially hydrolyzed. That's not set in stone, just how marketing is at the moment. So that's, you can think about the, the um, proteins as being uh, broken in half or a little smaller. Then comes a category of fully hydrolyzed, where we just break them up even smaller. Fully hydrolyzed formulas in the U.S. are hypoallergenic formulas. So these formulas, the proteins, are broken down so small, if you are a biochemical nerd, it's just like dye and tripeptides, really tiny, and some free amino acids. So like super, super tiny proteins. And the reason they are, get the label, hypoallergenic, is that for the vast majority of children who have a cow's milk allergy, like a true diagnosed allergy, the proteins, even though they're cow's milk proteins, are broken down so small, they do not elicit an allergic response. So that is... Um, the appropriate, so and these are hypoallergenic. So this is if a kid gets diagnosed with a cow's milk allergy, this is what they get put on. This is your Alimentum, your Nutramogen, and your Gerber HA, the HA standing for hypoallergenic. So those are fully hydrolyzed. You can go smaller to a whole category of amino acid-based formulas, sometimes referred to as elemental formulas, like you're just down to the elements. Technically, amino acid-based formulas have no protein at all because a protein by definition is a chain of amino acids. So if it's free amino acids, it's just the building blocks of protein. So this is for kids with severe allergies um, and a lot of other medical uh, issues I'm not gonna get into. Um, uh, genetic digestive issues, post-surgery issues, short bowel syndrome, kind of things that like, if your baby has this, you are under a, a large medical team of care. Um, so the, the, the biggest group of kids who are on elemental or amino acid-based formulas are kids with a severe cow's milk allergy. So children who have a real cow's milk allergy, 10% of them will still react to a hypoallergenic formula, your Nutramogen and your Alimentum. That 10% need an amino acid-based formula. And I want to be clear, that doesn't, I didn't mean that 10% of children who are on a hypoallergenic formula will react because we really overprescribe hypoallergenic formulas. Like way more kids are on them who actually, than actually have an allergy. But 10% of kids who have a real allergy will still react to a hypoallergenic formula and they will need an amino acid-based formula. Amino acid-based formula, I think you said Elicare. So Elicare, Neocate, and Pure Amino are the brands that are amino acid-based formulas. I don't discuss these on my website because again, if you have a kid who needs one of those formulas, this is not something you mess around with yourself as a parent. You need, a, you need probably more than even just a pediatrician. You need like a whole team. I would want you seeing a GI and, and maybe some other specialists to figure out exactly what's um, challenging your child. So that was a really long answer to say, sounds like your MD is awesome. And I, when I um, am consulting with patients who are on an amino acid formula, do the exact same thing. Like you don't just go from an amino acid formula to an enthymal infant. It's just such a huge jump in uh, the digestive capacity you need. So you bump them up from an amino acid to a fully hydrolyzed to a partially hydrolyzed. And if they continue to do well, you can continue to slowly bump them up through the categories until they get to uh, whatever the biggest protein they can digest comfortably. Um, so I hope that, that is helpful. I'm going to end there. I hear some fireworks going off. Yeah, it's 940. It's totally my bedtime. Thank you so much for, if you are still watching this, you are amazing. Um, I will continue to do this as long as you guys find it helpful. I'm sorry I haven't been very regular. I am just doing my best here. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. And yeah, it was really helpful for me last time. I said, if this is helpful for you, let me know. And a lot of people did. So the same thing, if this is too specific for individual babies and it's not helpful, let me know that too. And I'll go back to um, tackling like a general topic. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Um, it was wonderful hanging out. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Facebook, I clicked off Instagram first this time. So now good night to you. <laughs> Bye.